Hey guys, my name is Kenna and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's video is going to be all about DIY hand sanitizers with recent events that are going on in the world. There has been a ton of circulation of these at-home recipes to make your own hand sanitizer. So in today's video, I am going to go through what is effective as a hand sanitizer, what is not effective as a hand sanitizer, and then my recommendations on using hand sanitizers when they're appropriate, when they're not, to just have the best uh, proper hygiene that you can have during this time. So if you wanna learn more about do-it-yourself at homemade hand sanitizers, then just keep watching. Okay, so first things first, hand sanitizers are considered over-the-counter drugs in both the United States and in Canada. That means they have to go through an approval process where they get a drug identification number or a natural product number. And they have to cer meet certain requirements and have proof of specific testing that they do kill microbes when they're used properly. So an effective hand sanitizer will have isopropyl alcohol at 70%. And then it can also have ethanol between 60 to 70 percent and it also has some other ingredients in there to make sure the alcohol is not so drying on your hands. This can include things like glycerin, um, an aloe vera gel, and vitamin E sometimes. Similar to just washing your hands, hand sanitizers do have to be on your hands long enough to actually be effective and the issue with alcohol is that it's very drying on the skin with prolonged use and with overuse, it can really dry your skin, leaving cracks in your epidermis, and that is actually a way that microbes can get into your skin and cause infection. So a lot of these at-home hand sanitizer recipes do include things like witch hazel, I've seen things with vodka or different types of like drinking alcohols. Sometimes they'll have essential oils. It's really important to know though that hand sanitizers are formulated by chemists in a very specific way so that they're effective, so that they're not irritating, and so that they don't dry your hands out completely. Again, leaving that room for cracking of the skin leading to infection. So you might have clicked on this video because you thought I was gonna give you a recipe to make your own at-home hand sanitizers. It's really not something that I recommend you do yourself. If you absolutely have to be using a hand sanitizer, you should buy one. I know that lots of larger superstores and places like Amazon are completely sold out, but I've seen them a lot still at convenience stores and smaller stores, they are still available for sale. And if you don't have access to hand sanitizer, your best option is to be washing your hands regularly with soap and water. Making your own hand sanitizer can lead to an ineffective product, meaning it does not actually have enough ethanol or al isopropyl alcohol to actually be effective. It could be irritating with additional ingredients that you add, such as essential oils. And then it can be ultimately too drying if you're just using like straight up alcohol, like a 98% isopropyl alcohol or something along those lines. So things that are really not effective as an at-home san hand sanitizer would be using vodka to make it, um, witch hazel extract, which even when it does contain alcohol, it's not enough to kill microbes. Essential oils are not effective at killing the virus. And adding different things into your hand sanitizer, such as an aloe vera gel or even essential oils can naturally lead to more microbial contamination of the product. Thus, you could just be spreading um, lots of bacteria all over your hands every time you're using that product. The other issue that can arise when you're making hand sanitizers at home on your own is that the equipment that you're using has bacteria or viruses already present in it. So then when you are making your formulation, it can already be contaminated with those microbes as well. But if you really are in a pinch and you feel like it's super, super necessary to have hand sanitizer, there is a couple of recipes that are approved by the World Health Organization to be actually used as hand rubs on your own when people are either in remote locations, they can make this when they don't have access to stores to buy hand sanitizer. So I will pop those on the screen right now. So for the first recipe, you will need ethanol at 96%, which in Canada, it's not something that you can get, but 
in the United States it is something that you can get. So for example, if you're gonna make a liter of this preparation, you would need 833.3 milliliters of ethanol 96%. You would need 41.7 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide at 3%. And then you would need 14.5 milliliters of glycerol at 98%. And this will give you the final concentrations of 80% ethanol, 1.45% glycerol, and 0.125% hydrogen peroxide. And all of those concentrations are volume over volume. So the second formulation is using isopropyl alcohol at 99.8%. Now this one is something that you could actually get in Canada and you can get isopropyl alcohol at 99.8% in the US as well. So to make a liter of that, you would need 751.5 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol 99.8%, 41.7 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide 3%, and 14.5 milliliters of glycerol 98% to give you the final concentrations of 75% isopropyl alcohol, 1.45% glycerol, and 0.125% hydrogen peroxide. So basically if you are in an absolute pinch, you could use those two formulations, but it's really better to either just buy hand sanitizer if you can find it at a store, and if you don't have access to hand sanitizer, then definitely just be using soap and water as much as you can. If you have to go out in public, you can wear vinyl gloves to do your shopping, or if you just go out and you're really careful not to touch your face or anything, and then as soon as you get in a place where you can wash your hands with soap and water, that is the best thing that you can do. While well, using hand sanitizer can kill microbes on your skin, washing your hands with soap and water actually rinses them off. So it is more effective to be washing your hands with soap and water than to be using a hand sanitizer. But I do just wanna highlight that those are the only two formulations that are recommended by health professionals to be making hand sanitizer. And any other recipes that you've seen online that are using things like witch hazel water, uh, tea tree oil, you know, various essential oils, like using isopropyl alcohol and aloe gel. Those recipes should definitely be avoided. I do not recommend you try those at home and definitely don't rely on them as a antiseptic hand rub during this time or ever. So I hope that didn't come off too harsh. It's just really important to take your health very seriously and not to be just following these Fun little recipes that you can find online put out by people that just are not either educated to put them out or qualified to put them out. Essentially, you do just want to be following the guidelines from the World Health Organization, the CDC, and your local health offices. And it is really important to just know that these products are regulated for a reason. Um, they are considered over-the-counter drugs. They have to be formulated in a very special way and that's why they require things like a drug identification number and a natural product number. So I definitely do not encourage you to try these at home hand sanitizer recipes unless you absolutely feel like you have to, but the best thing that you can do is to wash your hands with soap and water very thoroughly for about 30 seconds. Now if you are looking for like home cleaning solutions, you can definitely use like a 70% alcohol spray just to clean down packaging, clean down surfaces because it's not going to be, we're not worried about that surface drying out and having the opportunity for microbes to cause infection. So you can use either like a bleach solution or something like an alcohol solution to be cleaning your surfaces, to be cleaning packaging, uh, packages, you know, food packaging, anything that you are bringing in from the outside, you definitely can use that for cleaning purposes. But for your hands, I definitely recommend you just buy a hand sanitizer or are very thorough with your hand washing with soap and water. All right, you guys, that is it for me today. I hope that you learned a little bit something about these at-home hand sanitizer recipes. Um, I definitely do not encourage you to try them at home. As I said before, it's just not really worth the risk at this point and it definitely could cause more damage than good. Let me know if you guys have any other questions relating to this topic or any other topic uh, down in the comments below and thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you are all staying very safe and healthy and I wish you all the best. See you in my next video.